Welcome to Kick Back with Chris. Kick Back with Chris, the martial arts podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of Kickback with Chris, the Martial Arts Podcast. I hope you are all well, uh, not too freezing cold in this very, very cold November weather that we're having now, which I'm not going to moan about because it's November and it happens every year, so I'm not going to be one of those negative people that moans about the weather. Um, but no, uh, all that aside, uh, we've got an absolutely amazing show for you, and I'm not blowing my own trumpet with that one because I actually don't say very much in this episode, but you'll see why. Um, I actually, um, I've actually done the the recordings for this one. I'm actually, re- we're doing a little bit back to front, a little bit of an insider thing for you here and how this works, but um, I've actually recorded the interviews for today and I'm just recording this lead-in, which I'm glad I did because I am actually not going to say a whole lot because I'm just going to let the content from our two guests um, do all the work for me today. Um, so today we will be having our, our regular weekly uh, Matt Chat with Matthew Chapman. Um, we're going to be talking about, well, actually, I'm going to let him explain a little bit about that later on. Uh, but before that, we have um, a very, very special guest on, uh, a good friend of mine over the years, and actually somebody who was with us back at the start of this podcast six months ago. That's hard to believe, but yeah, six months ago. It's time has flown by. Um, he's on the fourth or fifth episode I believe it was um, Mr Gordon Bircham um, and you know you might be thinking well he was, he's been on not long ago but this is somebody that is constantly moving forwards and constantly pushing to improve uh, his own position with his martial arts and his school and his teaching um, but also the industry, the wider industry as a whole um, and guys there is some absolute gold dust content in this one so stick stick with it, listen right the way through um, there's lessons to be learned right up until the very end of this interview with Gordon who was very 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 kind with his time, he's super super busy guy, um, you know we're, we're talking about somebody now who's on, on you know the verge of being world level um so you know you can imagine that this is somebody you know uh, uh, giving up an hour of his time as i'm super super thankful for so anyway enough of me waffling on we'll get straight into the interview with gordon and then i'll catch up with you on the other side you're listening to kick back with chris the martial arts podcast brought to you by www.onlinekicking.co.uk okay guys so it's that time again joining us on the line now we've got mr gordon bircham how are we doing today sir I am absolutely phenomenal. How are you? I'm brilliant, thank you, sir. Brilliant. Um, so it's it's hard to believe how qu- quickly time has flown by. I was looking back through the lists, um, and it was actually episode five, which was six months ago, um, that we last spoke on the podcast. And uh, wow. I know it's crazy, isn't it? It's half a year. It's just whew, just gone like that. Um, but you know, in that time, obviously, there's been a lot going on <laughs> in, in your life, as there always is. Um, all very, very positive and great to see. Um, but obviously, in that time, in that six months, we've 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 gained uh, a lot of new listeners that perhaps don't know um, don't know about you and the work that you've done. And um, so I thought it'd be nice if we just start with like a bit of a brief opener, as best we can. <laughs> um, yeah. Just uh, you know a little bit about your history, you know how you started martial arts, your experience, that sort of thing. And go from there. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah. So I've been involved in martial arts for twenty three years now. Um, started uh, when I was sixteen, nearly seventeen years of age. Uh, at kickboxing um, school, uh, which um, I really didn't want to join. Um, I was very uh, a very shy lad. I uh, got bullied quite a bit and lived in a lot, a lot of conflict fear uh, for a very, very long time. And starting martial arts was definitely not on my radar. In fact, I did start martial arts at a primary school uh, back in the day when you used to go and pay 50p um, <laughs> in the school hall and have... Um, I remember the, um, you know, I remember one time that the the sensei at the time, he had a big belly on him, and um, <laughs> uh, I, I I'd done a grading that I didn't even know I'd done a grade, and he took me into the storeroom. Don't worry, guys, uh, into the storeroom, and um, he got um, he got some tape out. Yeah, and um, he went. He, um, he he put some tape on and said, "You've now passed your grading." Oh. Like, okay, you know the coloured tape. Yeah, that was your grading. Yeah, oh, I've I've still got my first belt actually on the wall in my gym with some green electrical tape around the bottom of it. So yeah, I I, I remember those days really really well. Hilarious, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was a that was the start of it. But yeah, so starting martial arts. I remember my hippie friend coming to me and saying, "I'm starting martial arts, man." Yeah, I said, like, "Okay, cool. Because I'm doing kickboxing, you should come down." I'm thinking, no, 
why am I going down to that? I'd stop myself swearing then because I'm on a podcast. And then um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, I then uh, ended up, uh, but I ended up going down, started martial arts, went from there. Uh, but I had a lot of fear while I was doing it. I used to cry and driving backwards and forwards so many times to get to the actual do- dojo, just in fear for such a long time. I used to get upset before I went in, and you know, started sparring. So I went on that big journey of martial arts and got into competing. Um, yeah, first tournament, I swear it was Bruce Lee in front of me, knocked me down a few times. Well, in fact, he's knocked me down 10 times. Every single shot, he knocked me down. Wow. Um, and I remember feeling like I'd been hit by, literally by a train. And uh, I remember getting up from that first tournament thinking, no why? threw my gloves around. They went about a mile in the, in the, in the area. <laughs> and I was crying that time. You know, oh, I was no. not, I think I was 18, 19. And, you know, I just, it was just a hard time. But I kept on going and doing it. And, uh, and went on a, a big journey in competing, kept going, failing very uh, lots of times. I used to go every Sunday, failed at compete, you know, failed many times, lost so many fights, but kept going. And through that journey, ended up, um, you know, winning a few few things and started building up my tournament career. And went on um, on on a big journey and, um, and of self discovery. Really, I had to really find myself, find who I was. And um, in 2012, I won my first world kickboxing title in Canada, um, which was the pivotal moment in my life, if mm. I'm honest. It was a time that I had arrived. It was a time that I found myself, and that was 15 years into my career. Yeah. And um, it was an amazing experience and, and one that I'll never forget. Uh, and then I went on to win three consecutive world titles and win pretty much everything. And it was one of them trigger moments in your life. And everything spiraled and, in, in a great way and, you know, uh, moves forward for me since that point and, and I've had such an amazing journey since that at uh, that point which I'll, I'll probably get to share with you in in, yeah, in due yeah. course of the podcast yeah, yeah. absolutely I mean I'll, I'll, I'll thank you for sharing that as well because I think it is important you know that people have that knowledge of your, of your background in the history and um, and it's helped to shape who you are now and and obviously help you uh, to do the things that you do now as well of which there are many now with every guest i always before i come online i always write down a list of things that i want to talk about that they're being up to but the piece of paper i had wasn't big enough um, so <laughs> <laughs> i've had to i've had to condense it a little bit <laughs> okay to, uh, to pick some select things over sort of the last 12 months or so because you know yeah. for those that don't know gordon out there guys you know this is a person who's always 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 positive and always on the go doing something constantly you know even just getting five minutes to get you to sit down for time for a podcast is you know this this day at this time is, is very very difficult which is a good thing you know you've got lots going on um but i think really at the minute I, the, last week um matt and myself were talking about um mabex and the phenomenon yeah. that mm-hmm. is this event that you've created um, sure. I'd just be nice if you could just share with us how that came about, what gave you the idea, and, and, and how it was all brought together, because it is one hell of an event. Yeah, thank you very much. And, um, you know, I have, a, I have a massive passion for martial arts, and I have a massive passion for martial arts development. Uh, and, and I really believe, like, you know, in the UK market, for instance, you know, a couple of years ago, if I share my story, if I may, I'm, I mean, I was, I've, I've, I've got a... a pretty successful school got 400 members full-time facility uh, and um you know i've been I, I went on a big journey for 11 years i lost my house 11 years ago trying to build my martial arts school as a white belt in business great teacher i believe i was and um but i just couldn't i couldn't get the business so i'd lost my house in a real dire position in my life it was the worst feeling ever and i had to go on a big journey of learning and development and i, I found a business coach now, some of you may know the story mm. um, I'm not shy about sharing it and <laughs> I had to find a, a business coach we were on £25 a week to live on for food and I had to make a decision found a business coach and it was £3,000 for this business coach for three months £1,000 a month and it's something that I you know at that time I was like I cannot afford this like there's no way I can't even you know, just about surviving but a trigger happened in my mind of like you know you've got to do something different to get something different sold some stuff in my house and went and, and, and managed to raise the money and and my back was against the wall me and my wife's back were against the wall we had nothing and i literally went for that three months of 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 literally just learning and employing everything 16 hour days and we tried we well over tripled our business within the first three two and a half months that was a massive shift for me in the importance of education and i went from there and just decided i was going to immerse myself in education went on a 
a business coach and I still got different business coaches now I've got three mentors but I had a business coach for you know uh, for, for all that time and um, and in the middle of that I had a, a life coach for five years really working on me I had a lot of barriers a lot of self-belief issues I had a lot of love issues didn't love myself didn't like myself did not like who I looked who I sounded I didn't like the sound of my own voice and I def- definitely didn't like my name hence the name I did, I did not a big fan of it but I didn't love myself and that was a big problem and I had to really work hard on myself and I've been into some gone to some deep dark places to really find who I am and uh and over, on that journey of like, I've learned a lot in business, but also personal development. And and I know I was the biggest barrier in that yeah. journey of, of, of building my school. I had the skills, I had the know-how, but I just didn't have the skills within business. And I didn't have the belief. And that was a big thing. And I didn't understand myself very well. So I've been on a massive journey. Uh, and, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I wanted to... I was looking for something different and, and I was at a property event and I was learning about property and there was a trigger point in that property event where I wanted to, I, I, it just, there was just this point, you know, when you have them times in your life where there's, there's this, there's like this aha moment mm-hmm. and then there's this big trend. And I seen where they were reaching tens of thousands of pounds with their training company. And it just, I, I just came into my head, martial arts, business mastery. And, um, and it was to help people become black belts in business, to help martial arts school learners become black belts in business. And I set from that day, I literally went the next morning, set up a group called martial arts, business mastery community oh, and started to give content in there to help school owners with no other agenda, but I wanted to help because I didn't want everyone, anyone to feel the pain I felt of losing my house and feeling so low and, and really feeling lost. Like you want to become a martial arts instructor and you want to grow your school and then you want to want it to become a, a, a not just a hobby. You'd like it to become a like a like a mini business. God yeah. forbid, like martial arts, you make any money from martial arts, but that's another story. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, I wanted to make it into a business because I wanted it to be my livelihood. I wanted to teach my passion, and um, so I, I I wanted to be that person who helped. I wanted to be that person. I thought there's nothing in the UK like this anymore. Yeah. You know, and you go back to the old days, and there was like the old systems, which you, I, you know, they were they were what they were. But you know, I'm a big giver to humanity. I love giving. I love helping. And I was like, you know, what can I do to serve this community and really make a change and a difference? So I set the community up and went from there. And over the last two and a half years, I think, you know, I, I dare I say it, and I, without you know, I to say this very humbly, I think we've created a movement. Yeah. And I think oh, yeah. create something. That's very unique in this industry where, you know, I, I'm not in, like I'm not the kind of person that, you know, wants to take someone who's good and got a talent. And then you know, I do, you know, I, that's great for me. Like, that's awesome. You know, take someone who's already got a talent, already got a great school and make them even better. For me, it starts at grassroots within the martial arts industry. And I want to take people who are great at martial arts who have absolutely no idea about business and show them how they can build a business and still maintain the quality in their school uh, while having an amazing lifestyle and really can de- the sky's the limit for them. Mm. So that's what martial arts business mastery is all about. And what it did um, and what I wanted to do was connect us as an industry, bring us together as a whole and regardless of style and organization, all that crap that surrounds the martial arts and I'm better than you and you're better than like, you know, lots of, and I'm going to be really brash here. Mm. Lots of the martial arts industry, they, they, they act like big kids. You know, they have this, <laughs> they have real, you know, they really do. They act like babies. You know, if you look at, hold on a minute, no one's better than anybody else. Yeah. All martial arts is great. You know, you can look at some of the, you know, the, the, the guys, you know, out there, the franchise owners, you know, you look at them and they'll go, yeah, well, he's crap and he's older, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know what? Okay, if they're change, changing people's lives and they're helping people, good for them. Mm. You know, and, and who are we to judge other people? And I want to try and move this judgment. And that's what I built Martial Arts Business Mastery for. And I think what we've got, we've now got a communi- community, you know, of all different styles, backgrounds, length in, in school, you know, school yeah. ownership. And I believe we're creating a, community, a big community where people are now actually talking to each other. And I, one of the big messages i've been trying to create is we're not in competition with each other we're in competition with every other different activity we need to be the number one mar- the number one activity for kids and adults in the uk and around the world and i really believe that and i think that's one of the big messages that i've tried to keep and congruent within the community mm. and i think we're starting to create a movement so master's business mastery was born and um over that time, we've created courses and workshops and coaching programs and mastermind and all these things to help facilitate 
the growth of martial arts as a business in the UK, mm. but more importantly, to maintain the standards. So anyone who's listening to this, by the way, and I'm quite passionate about this, and Chris will know this, <laughs> is that you can build a martial arts school and maintain your standards. Yes. The reason that the martial arts, you know, you, like the delusion is this, that you can't build a martial arts school without selling out. That is bullshit, I'm sorry. That is absolutely everything to do with the instructor, nothing to do with the school, like the, the building a business. Mm -hmm. You can build a business and choose to maintain a standard. Like my, my our standard is like, we, our, I choose to put my standard on our black belts. Now our black belt grading is 25 hours. Mm -hmm. You know, I put my black belt grading up against anyone's. It is solid, mm -hmm. like tough as it gets. Yeah. And, but we maintain our standards, still built a very healthy school. And, and, you know, you can have that in your school. And I really believe that it's down to the instructor. Yep. And you can just build a great school, earn a great amount of money from it. And so you should. That may, helps you to serve your community, serve your industry, be able to build another center, create more jobs, all this. What an amazing thing that is. But it's down to the instructor. It's got nothing to do with being a sellout because you earn money for martial arts. That was my delusion. Is what I was taught when I was younger. And what many are taught that if you make money for martial arts, you're a sellout. Mm -hmm. But funnily enough, and I will say this, I've researched this. A lot of the guys who taught that analogy, that BS, okay, were the masters and they were the ones taking all the money. <laughs> They're the ones who are there lapping it up and got the cars and got the houses and laughing at the people below them. They still, you can't make money from our US seller. They, they made up and created that story. So when you look and if you really dive in and if you don't believe what I'm saying, I would dive in. Look at the masters. Look at the guys at the top. They're laughing. Go If you go to Japan, they're taking the piss. Like a lot of these guys, <laughs> they take the piss. You know, I know, I'm involved in Filipino martial arts. I know. A lot of the Filipino guys, they, they laugh. They're like, yeah, give us three thousand pounds, and here's your certificate. They're laughing, and they're not even teaching you know, exactly the, the real art. So you can you can look at all this. A lot of it's hocus pocus. My instructor Alfie Lewis, the legend that is Alfie Lewis, taught me this. He says it's like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. You know, and he says you unravel the curtain and start to find out who the real wizard is. And you look at this, and it is so true. Like it's so true, and it hurt me for a long time. That did. It hurt me for a long time. And in fact, I nearly came out of martial arts, Chris. Yeah. I, I nearly came out. There was, a t there was a point a couple of years ago, and it's only a couple of years ago, this is, mm. by the way, while I was building martial arts business mastery, where there was a pivotal moment in where I was going. And I thought, you know what? This is bullshit. Mm. Like a lot of this stuff that's going on, when you look at it, when you look at the pantomime that's created in martial arts, and you look and you think, there's no congruency here in the arts. Mm. There's no congruency in the we teach respect and discipline and honor and all that. And you look at how they're performing on Facebook. Yeah, that's you true. Look how they are. And you look at the backstabbing and the thing, you think, oh, my God. Like, and, and I really had a tough time of it. And you looked at people saying this and saying that. And I was like, this isn't martial arts. This isn't the Budo way. This is not what we're talking about. And, and I think, you know what? It's... It, it, it's such a shame, and I, I, I want to be able to change that. I want to be able to educate people that we are, a, 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 for me, an amazing industry, but we've got to grow up as an industry. Yeah. We've got to grow up yeah. together and remove the BS and the competition. So the ego and the competition are the worst thing. Yeah, it is. So um, I wanted to, I've just, I've gone off a little bit on tangent there. And ah, it's, all, it's all quality, though. Keep going. I'm learning it. And, and, and I <laughs> believe it's, some, it's something that is very passionate to me that, we are an amazing industry, but we have got to grow up. We've got to grow and we've got to develop. And this BS about business and stuff, the old school guys, I love you. I love you to death. I'm an old school. I'm, I'm brought up old school. I've got, I love martial arts. That's real. But please, guys, get out your own way. If you're listening to this podcast and you feel you're old school, great. Awesome. Now step up and learn how to really take on what you would perceive as, you know, the McDojos and all of the stuff that you call and create and, and knock down. If you don't step up and become uh, more 21st century and learn about business and growth and development the arts will die it's mm. your responsibility i believe like i really believe the old school guys it's their responsibility to keep the arts alive and you can keep them alive because by learning about business because if you don't the business savvy guys will get all of, will get them all yeah. and then you'll go well yeah but it's not old school great well you've allowed it to die i really believe that yeah, true. so i think it's and i know some people won't want to hear that 
I know that they want to it's just a, why can't they just let's see if we can kill the McDojos if you want to call it that it cracks me up that that one but if, the, if you want to kill it like that if you, you think you're going to kill them by, by producing great martial arts you're deluded because the masses don't understand what great martial arts is mm-hmm. and that's where the delusion is but you've got to, you've got to create the you know you're the fluffy side the, you've got to make it look like you're that, that it's available to the masses and then still teach them the arts and this is where I, you know, I'm really passionate about. So to answer your question, Chris, <laughs> okay, I created Master's That's Business Mastery to create a movement. And last year, in 2017, I looked around and I went, and I'm quite a, I'm quite a maverick and I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit different to a lot of people. <laughs> in a good way. A personality and have a different mindset. And I look at things objectively, but I also look at things in a, in, in a way that, 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 that probably don't make sense to some people. I was like, hold on a minute. We're a UK, in the UK here. We're, we're like, we've got some of the, great, the greatest martial artists ever in the UK. I really believe that, right? Yeah. And we're talking about how great we are. There's nothing that really showcases our arts. And there's nothing that really helps pe- business owners grow. There's nothing that brings us together. You have to go to America. And by the way, any Americans listening, I love you guys. You're amazing. You know, and people like Michael Perella doing martial arts, you know, but busy, no, Mabs over there, he's doing an amazing job mm-hmm. over there. Re- like, unbelievable um, what they do over there. But here's the thing. We are the UK. Yes, yeah. And we are the UK martial arts. So hold on a minute. Like, I, and, I, yeah. I, and, I, and I honestly believe that, like, most events in the UK are crap. I, do, I, I just don't think they're up to the standard that is required. Yeah. I'm sorry if that upsets anyone, but they're not that great. And they're not the standard that I believe they need to be in the UK. So what I did was I um, I decided to start uh, to do an event for business owners to bring us together to network and to change the face on how events are done in the UK. Mm-hmm. So I set up Martial Arts Business Extreme, and the objective was to not just go there and and te- like teach people a few things and it be boring. So they're learning about business and this is how you do this and what you've got and be too corporate. Mm. What I wanted to do was create a, a high quality event that people go, wow, this is a different level, but also bring some realism to it, bring some, you know, bring some creation to it and bring people that are outside of our industry in world-class speakers yeah. that are going to, disrupt the thought pattern and the flow and actually um, help us grow as an industry and that's where martial arts business extreme was born uh, and we, we we built we did our first one in 2017 which was kind of groundbreaking mm-hmm. because i remember the first time we did this chris this is brilliant like the first time we did martial arts business extreme one of the things that we forgot to do was message everyone and tell everyone it was smart dress <laughs> and it was hilarious. So we sent the message out the day before. So just to remind you guys, you're coming. I remember it's this. And we had a kickoff. Yeah. Where people said, I was coming in my tracksuit and my hoodie. Yeah. You know, and all this stuff going. I was like, whoa. And I'd sent things out and telling them it's a beautiful hotel and yeah. great facility and show, telling them about how this was going to be different. But they had this mind. They were going to turn up in tracksuits and uh-huh. trainers and they were annoyed about it, but you know what was really cool is they, they, um, they, you know, they, they stomped around a bit, but they got, you know, they ended up coming in trousers and shirt. Not, it's not smart like not black tie, but looking smart, yeah. Some real smart, cash, like real good. Yeah. And they came in and they understood it. Yeah. And the reason I did the, the the clothing that way was to get people to think differently about the business. Absolutely. And that, that that was groundbreaking for the industry because it disrupted it made something very different um, that they've never had before you know we had the, the attention to detail on the tables and the the way it looked oh, and yeah. it felt we created a community that day yeah. that's still going today the friendships that were born you know i had so many school learners that that last event in, in 2017 the first event where people were like literally there were a school literally there were like 800 yards up the road where they'd had these conflicts and then they were talking to each other mm-hmm. and they were helping each other mm-hmm. and, and then they were returning this year and they're both their schools had grown. Yep. There was no one losing from anyone else. And then we launched this year's Mabex and um, I, I truly believe 2018 was so special for this industry. You can't put into words the atmosphere in the room and the connectivity. And it was just a very, very special place to be. And it, it sent a benchmark. It, did. it set a benchmark for our industry to where we absolutely need to be. And uh, you know, people like Zara Pythian, you know, uh, who, uh, who messaged me and she was like, I can feel that she's 
so happy to see our industry because she's got quite, she's quality and she yeah. she's always going to see it that way. And I think we've well, I think we've done it. You know, well, I think we've definitely made strides towards it. Absolutely, wow. <laughs> I think you've answered all my questions in that one answer there. That was <laughs> it's pretty that was good. Love love your enthusiasm and energy for it as always. But now just coming back to you on a couple of things that you mentioned in there, especially with regards to Mobex. What for me what I really enjoyed about it was, you know, you had people in there that had literally they they just set their schools up they were they're brand new to to the industry and then people who have been in it sort of 20 plus years with multiple schools and all these people from all these different backgrounds and experience levels all working together to push martial arts in a positive direction it was it was beautiful to see and it was beautiful to see some of the old school guys seeing they were there and they, they got it and they were like they were buying course because they could yeah. see it they all of a sudden like finally there's yeah. a there's a there's a there's a there's light at the end of the tunnel. I can see this. We help them believe there is, you know, you're not alone. And, and then the new schools, I mean, I felt like so, some of the new school owners, they, they, they walked in and they were like, wow, like this is what, this is unbelievable. And some of them I've had messages where they've just got off and absolutely rocketed their schools. I yeah. mean, how cool is that? It's amazing. Absolutely amazing to see. Um, so this, this week, uh, you've had some news on Facebook. You've been sharing with, with everybody about uh, the details of your new center that you're opening, which yes. just looks it like it man i don't even know how to describe it it's it's like it's bigger than the moon it's <laughs> it's huge i actually jokingly put on your um on your post about it that your center is bigger than the street that my center is on <laughs> um i just wondered if you could share a little bit about your plans and you know, sure. what you're wanting to do with that going forwards next year well first of all i've had to stop because obviously i've been posting it and i've had lots of women <laughs> saying on there i've had to stop there lots of women saying gordon that's massive so i said oh it's okay i've got a wife you have to stop doing that um, but yeah so i found that really funny lots of women just going gordon that's massive gordon that's huge i'm yeah. like whoa hold on a minute so yeah see my quirky nature um, so so yeah so but yeah it's um it, it this is a dream of mine and um, and it's a dream for two reasons and, and and it's kind of like the accumulation over the years uh, of wanting to do something very special for the industry and bring my two biggest passions together, yeah. which is teaching martial arts at a world-class level and educating and inspiring others, personal development and business growth. Mm -hmm. So this bit, this, this 9,000 square foot facility is going to be, um, half of it is going to be my martial arts dojo. And, and it's going to be like, it's got a big viewing gallery. I mean, we're going to town on this to make it amazing. And it's just something that I can give back to my local community. I'm, I'm really excited about. Uh, and it's going to look, we want to, we want it to be a place when people come in and go, wow, it's going to be a wow place. Yeah. Uh, but where we're going to still continue to teach quality martial arts. And in fact, we're adding more classes. We've got more martial arts going in there. Wow. Um, we're going to be holding uh, mini uh, tournaments in there. We've just got so many ideas for it. It's unbelievable. And I'm going to be putting on a seminar. And this is going to be, I'm, I'm, this is my goal, to put a seminar on and check it um, in there and bring in together um, the, the martial artists for nothing. I don't want, I don't want, I want it to be done for free for our community, martial arts community. I'm aim, I've got a vision to bring together martial arts over a weekend, different martial arts instructors, just to give back to our community and for not charging anything for it. That wow. was my aim. Um, and 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 because I I believe you know I'm all you know, I'm a person who likes to bring people together, and this is the kind of thing that would really inspire me. I mean, imagine how cool that would be yeah. to get martial artists. And my aim is to bring us all together, as many as we can from different styles together not for money not for anything else but for us to be together yeah. wow because i realized through doing my events the power of us being together you know together we're stronger every mark like when you like we go back to mabex there mate and like how powerful were we as a unit in mm. that, that that room mm. like yeah. we felt unstoppable didn't we yeah, and that's the great. power amazing and I, and I believe the more we work together the more we grow together the more we uh, uh, you know learn and evolve together it's going to make our industry excuse my language fucking unstoppable <laughs> that's what we want so I love it. so um, that's good. so that's what the martial arts says and then on the other side I've got a conference facility which is unique which is going to be a conference and facility. It's going to um, hold courses, trainings on everything from personal development, martial arts, business development to inspiration. Uh, and um, I want to house it as well. Uh, I want to, um, I want to create some, I'm going to be creating a, 
a, a, a movement for homeless people in the UK oh, wow. where what I want to do is around my local area, I want to create um, a uh, education for homeless. So I want to take homeless people off the street and I want to, instead of like giving them money and stuff like that, I want to give them a vision. I want to have give them a vision of what, you know, these guys are great hustlers. They're great. At, they're actually great entrepreneurs because they're great at, they, they, they can make things happen. Mm. They've just channeled it in the wrong way. I want to help them. And I think that people are, you know, lots of people get into alcoholism and, and addiction, mainly because they've lost their way. They've lost their things that happen in their life. They've lost their vision for life. Mm. I want to help people. And I want to help them. I'm going to help them to learn how to become great at sales, great at entrepreneurialism, great at, um, great at finding themselves as well. I want to help them on personal development as well. So it's just a little thing that I want to give back. Wow and develop uh, in the uk so it's going to be um uh, it's 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 going to be a hub for development like I, one of the big things like my, my slogan is developing champions for life and i realized only recently that i'm all about helping people develop and and, and unleash that that superior power that that genius within them because that's where i was lost and until I found me and who I am and what I give to this world and you know uh, I you know I, I lived a, a relatively unhappy life if you like and yeah. when i started to realize who i was and my true potential uh, that's when i started to fight like that's the journey i've been on and i want to give that back to other people you know i, I you know if i could i'm this kind of person like and I, I know this sounds really odd and any of the listeners here might, might find this a bit weird and a bit you know a bit corny if you like but honestly if i could wrap my hand around the world and give them a big hug and help them and guide them and pull them i, I would I really would. I want to help every single person on the planet. That's how big my vision is because I love to give to people. I'm just painting a picture of that in my mind now. <laughs> that would make a great pitch. You could have that on the wall. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I would. I would because I love picking. I, my biggest part, I love to pick people up. Yeah. I love to help them, elevate them, inspire them, and you know, motivate them, and educate them, and show them what they really can do in this world. Because it's the one, you know, for me, it, we're, we have boundless potential. Yeah. I had boundless potential. I just didn't see it. And I've been on such a big development journey, which is why I have a lot of passion, Chris. Yeah. I have a lot of passion because I've been on a big journey. Like, it's bigger than just business. It's really deep. I've broke through so many barriers in myself to find the person that stands there, the real person that sits here talking now. Yeah. And I'm not the finished article, but I want to help everyone else. You know, people call me, why are you so happy? Well, because I'm having a fucking great time. That's why <laughs> I, I, I'm enjoying life and, and I'm doing what I love and I'm fi I found my passion, I found my love. And, and why I'm so happy, like one of, the, my, one of my biggest things in life, uh, Chris, is if I've helped someone even by a smile yeah. or I've lifted their, their mood or I've inspired them with this podcast, that allows, that gives me that extra trigger to live. So it's like this, it's like a rechargeable battery. Yes. Every time I'm giving... It makes it helps them, and it makes me feel like I'm. It. it how do I explain this? It feels like I'm serving a purpose. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the best thing I can say. I feel like I'm serving humanity. I feel like I'm serving the world, and that in itself is very, very precious to me. It ha makes my heart sing. Brilliant. Well, you're doing a cracking job, mate. <laughs> um, now, um, I've actually got here in front of me some uh, listener questions people have submitted, um, and it'd be nice to, to go through a few of those if that's okay. No problem at all. Fantastic. Right, now we're going to start with one, actually touching a little bit on what you were saying there, from Mr. Matt Hood, who yes. it's quite a long question. I'm going to break it down a little bit. Um, he says, does Gordon have a routine for finding his mental state or does it just come naturally? Uh, does he feel exhausted after he finishes teaching? The reason Matt asks um, is he has to change his state to teach, but after three or four lessons, he says he feels mentally drained. Yeah, sure. Sure. And that, like, your mindset is a choice. Right. So... Everything in life is a choice. You know, our greatest, like, like, you got to understand one thing. Like, most people don't get this. And this is like, this is going to be quite, quite um, powerful, I think, for some, some people, not everyone, is that the greatest power we have as a human being is the power to choose. We're the only species on the planet that can choose. Mm. We are the only species. Imagine how powerful that is. It's our gift to choose. Now, you know, the, 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 the geese can't fly. I say, I want to fly north in the winter. You know, I want to fly north in the winter. They've got to fly south. They have no choice. Yeah. We are, they are all reactive. We have a choice. 
And we have a choice how we feel. We say, well, no, you don't. This is where the delusion is. And I've learned this. And there's a great guy called Tony Robbins who's brilliant with this. Yeah. Is that, and I've learned this, like, you can choose to say, no, I feel really low. Cool, put some great music on, you won't know. Get yourself up, jump in the air, make yourself feel better. Mm. You can't do that. No, that's what you're telling yourself you can't do. Choose to do it. You know, when you're feeling down, you've got to work what helps you lift up again. Yeah. You know, they say, oh, I feel really low. Yeah, you put my kid in front of me, who's smiling, says, hi, daddy, you're smiling, you feel amazing. Yeah. It's absolutely like, you put music on, you think about all that's great in your life, you know, I, I believe, like, I think one of the one of the skills in life is, you know, a gratitude is really important. Like, be grateful for what you have. People feel low because they're not grateful, really, mm. and they say, "Yeah, I'm grateful." When you feel grateful, and there's gratitude. There's an energy that resi resides in you. It comes out of your whole body. Wow, I'm just. You look at someone like like I'm going to go to Tony Pillage. Uh, what wow, an amazing man. Yeah. This guy uh, at Mabex just absolutely blew the roof off. And actually, I don't know Anthony very well. And, and I've put it, I, I, there was a trigger point where I, I had a coffee with him and there was something that said to me, put this guy on stage. Yeah. And, and it was the best decision I made yeah. because he bought a rawness and this guy, you know, bless him, he's dying of cancer, he's terminal and, and he's been through so much pain and he's, he told a message on stage at that event that absolutely resonated with that whole room. Oh, yeah. Everyone's talking about business and all this kind of stuff. They're, 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 we're talking about growth and, you know, someone's not re replied to my Facebook message and, you know, all this crap, yeah, that we create, yeah? And, and he's just talking about honesty and yeah. rawness. About one of the big points in his speech was he's gone through all the pain and, and everything and he's still going through it now, horrendous pain. But he had this, is there something that he said? And he said, um, all that pain he's been through. And when he's realized about them talking about how honesty, just be honest with how you feel. Be honest about everything. Be honest about where you are. He's never felt more alive. Yeah. And that was truly profound in my eyes. And yeah. that was what it was like, yeah. I, I've, I've never felt more alive and I'm dying. Now think about the power of that. And that's because he had gratitude. Mm. And he's gratitude and he's honest and grateful. I'm here, yeah. So sometimes you've got to strip it back to its rawest form. So many people, they, they, they carry a burden and that they created, you know, you know, oh, yeah, it's really hard. You see the story they're telling themselves. Yeah. Got to go and teach. Like the, the most important conversation you will ever have is the one you have for yourself. The question is, what are you telling yourself every day? And the reason I share that. It's because, so like for someone like Matt Hurd, he's probably going there, teaching, go, yeah, okay, I'm going to get there. For, am I going to be all right? I'm, I'm, I'm forcing myself to feel good. Yeah. I'm okay. And then it gets, oh, God, oh, can I just get through to the end now? And they're telling themselves the story. So, you know, you got, you got to, you can change that state. Start thinking about how great it is to have them kids in your class. Remember what it was like, like when you your first, your first kid in your class. Amazing. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't. Like when you first built the class, you wouldn't be tired at nine o'clock at night. Yeah. You'd be buzzing, excitement. But they lose that, yeah? They lose it because it becomes normal. That's right. And we get stuck in our cycle of life. And everyone's stuck there kind of, oh. They're like this. They get, they get lost in their own world. And they get and the gratitude, can you feel the gratitude of what I'm talking mm. about, Chris? It's like they lose the great, you know, being grateful. Gratitude is one of the most powerful things you can have. So why the answer to Matt's question is, <laughs> is, you know what, like, I have a saying that I learned from a guy called Ma'awa. It's just a phenomenal time to be alive. Yeah. And, and I've, I've taken that and I've run with it and I change it. And I, 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 I say this every day. What a phenomenal time to be alive. And I must say it at least 30, 40 times a day. And I must say it like I say it in my dojo. I say, what a phenomenal time to be alive. And you can see people like their heads turn a little bit and they look a bit like, Ooh, and they start <laughs> laughing and they're like, you're weird. And I say, hold on a minute. Like, I'm alive. I've been given this gift of life yeah. and I've been given this gift to teach people and I've been given this gift to stand here in front of you and I'm saying it's a phenomenal time to be alive and I've got a lot of energy and you think I'm weird when you're sitting down looking at your iPhone and you look like you're dying. Mm. You look like you're dying. You look like the whole world's falling on top of you and you've lost the gratitude for life. So the, the, the reason I'm like that, Mahud, and anyone else who's listening here is, is because I tell myself that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Do I have bad days? You're damn right. Jesus, the amount of challenges I have. Do I kick off sometimes? You're damn right. Mm. Do I feel sorry for myself sometimes? You're damn right. But it only lasts a short space of time these days because I've taught myself to drag myself up and look at and stop bitching about myself and say to myself, what a fucking phenomenal time to be yeah. alive. Look at what you've got. Yeah. Look at what you've got. Stop being a whiny little baby and start looking at yourself and going, 
wow, how lucky I am to have all them students. How lucky am I to teach this for my life? Mm. How lucky am I um, to have these challenges? I've got everything else. I've got, a, you know, I've got a roof over my head. I've got food. I've got a beautiful family. It's just a fucking phenomenal time to be alive. Yeah. Like, and and that to me is why I've got so much energy. Yeah. Number two. A, I've got gratitude. And number two is, and this is most important, Matt Hurd and everyone else listening here, uh, Chris, is I think without doubt, and I, and I know this for a fact because I know where I've been and where I am, and this has been a big shift, especially over the last sort of three or four years, is I do what I love. Yeah. And, and I outsource everything else. I try not to do anything I don't love. I love doing these podcasts. I love, you know, I love delivering to people. I love delivering courses. I'm shit at admin. I used to try and do admin. And I was rubbish and I hate it. And it used to go on my shoulders and it used to, oh, it used to make me feel like there was an elephant on my back, you know? So, so I don't, I try every day to do what I love and everything else. I just outsource it. And many people will say, it's all right for you. But guess what? And we're going to go back to what we said. It was a choice. Mm. I chose to change it because I had the delusion that I couldn't afford it. I had a delusion that staff were a problem. I had a staff. I, I did that for a long time, Chris. A long time. I had a delusion, but I had a book, and I want to give you all this. A great book called Life Leverage, and some of you may have yeah. read of it. By by my good friend Rob Moore, amazing guy, a property uh, owner, and he's a, just an amazing entrepreneur and a, a beautiful person. And like, it changed my perception on uh, leverage through others. So my biggest gift to you and anyone listening here is do what you love. How can you not be happy if you're doing what you love? <laughs> I love it. Like, keep it simple. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. If you don't love, outsource it. Leverage through others. But don't make the excuse you can't because then what you're saying is the life that I'm living is not important. Yeah. I've got, I, it's, you say, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to feel bad about it even though I'm going to create the excuses that I can't afford it and I can't, I don't know how to. That's just an excuse. And I'm going, I, that's more important to me than living a great life. You will, I promise you now, the reason I've got so much energy is because I'm doing what I love. I enjoy what I do. Mm. I, I don't, if there's anything I don't like doing, I find, you know, don't like the gardening, get a gardener. Don't like cleaning, find a cleaner. Don't like doing, run, I don't like going to get my own food, get someone to do food prep. Mm. And, and I know this sounds like, wow, it's all right for you, but I promise you it was a choice. Yeah. Funnily enough, what it allowed me to be, is more productive because now I'm doing the things that I love and that's all that I do and I do it at a high level because when like, I'm doing this podcast here, you know, I, I would like to think I'm delivering here. I'm not, Absolutely. Like, you know, and I, <laughs> I show up because I enjoy doing it and I want to give to humanity and I want to give. And, and, and when you're doing that, you and again, I talk about the recycle, the recharging. When you're doing what you love, you recycle, you're back like the Duracell bunny. Yeah. You give yourself more and more and more and you keep feeding that's why I have an insatiable desire for living. Love it. Uh, it's really interesting what you were saying about um, choice as well and mindset because I was actually listening to, I listen to a number of different podcasts on different subjects. I'm not, I've never been one for reading. I like, I like to listen when I'm doing other jobs and um, I was actually listening to, it was a, it was a, an eight time world record champion holding surfer. Um, it was talking about mindset and one of the things he said which really hit with me was, you know, he the, the, the podcast host was asking but you know, when you're in the water and you end up under the water for three minutes, how, how do you keep from panicking? And he said, well, it, I, I made it a choice. Yeah. I made it a choice to reprogram my thinking towards fear. Yep. We, instinctively, we have fear, but I've made the choice to retrain myself to think differently when I feel fear. And on, on that basis, he, he, it allows him to focus on the thing that he loves, which is the surfing, without having yep. to worry about the fear. Just by changing his, his his mindset on 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 how when he feels fear, his automatic response now is to not fear the fear. If that makes sense. Sure, yeah, exactly. He's a cho he chose not to. Yeah. It's the same thing, isn't it? It's all choice. And uh, it's the same two things that you come up with there. It's a choice, and yeah. he's doing what he loves. Yeah, like that is just amazing. Absolutely, Love absolutely. It. You've a you've actually in that last answer answered another question we had, which was from Matt State, which was very simply, where does he get all that bloody energy from? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's to do with, you know, it's. I, I really believe, like humans, like uh, number one, gratitude is soon. Like I said to you before, I just think people are lost. They're lost. If you if you look at most people and and uh, look look at the world, and I want I'd love you all to just step back and and take this uh, an objective view and step back and just look at how people walk around, mm. look at how people sit in your dojos, look at how they come in, look at 
you look at how ungrateful these people are and look at how dead they are. I think it's a walking. Look at them. Mm. They walk around. They're, they're, some of these people, I know people who are in their 30s. They look like they're 50 or 60. Mm. They've got so, And they look pained. And I really believe, like, like people say to me, God, you look younger. You never, you never age. Why would you age if you're doing what you love? Why would you age if you're enjoying it? You're only going to like you, you, if you if you smile more like smiling and, and being happy it's been proven to be a healer. Yeah. So if that's the case like if you look at these but look at them look at how they walk around they've got this sense of you know uh, you know they the world owes them something you know they they have um, low self esteem they're not happy you know they can't wait till friday you know and then they moan anyway yeah. you know just listen to the language and the feel the energy yeah and and you know i you know i i have a big mission in life i want to lift everyone that i see you know i i i was talking at expert empires i was privileged to talk on stage at wembley wow. it, not at wembley but in wembley yeah, yeah. and um I was on stage to 350 people in in, in there, and it was a it was a business um, conference and development conference for for coaches and trainers in in, in all industries. And one of the, the things I said on stage was, you know, I, if I like, I want to help millions and millions of people really try and f- find true happiness because it served me so well, and find not them them find themselves. And then to realize how wonderful life is mm. and actually to smile a bit more. Like that was my biggest thing. I'd love the world to smile a bit more. Wouldn't that be amazing? It would be, yes, absolutely. Wouldn't it be amazing if we just smiled more and we we're just happy more? And it comes down to gratitude and being happy. Like the, one of the greatest quotes I think, uh, you know, is, ever is be happy with what you've got while in pursuit of what you want in life. And I want to leave this. I want to say this here. And I think this is really important. Like, don't think that you're going to be happier when you hit a destination. Like many people say, I'll be happier when I get the bigger house. I'll be happier when I go on holiday. I'll be happier when I get a pay rise. I'll be happier when I'm earning more. That is absolute bullshit. Mm. And I'll tell you why. Because it becomes the not like, so yes, you get that initial high. So you achieve it and there's this initial high. So let's say if you take a, a new car, you get the new car and it's amazing for a few months yeah, that's true. and then it just becomes a car yeah. and you want the next thing. That is not being greedy. It's human nature. So if you think of that and everything else in life, people are aiming and saying, I'll be happy when I get hold on that thought. And if that's you and really be honest with yourself, be happy on the journey because it's where you spend the most time. Be happy just to live. Be happy just for being here. Be happy to see the trees swinging. Be happy to see the 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 rain fall down. Be happy to breathe. Be happy to um, to to be here. Mm. And for me, once you understand that, life becomes absolutely phenomenal. And someone listen to this and say that's a load of bollocks. I know. I'm preempted. I'm pre framed I know there'll be people saying there that's bollocks. You can't feel like that because they've been conditioned that way. To, oh, well, you've got to have negativity. Remember the story I said? Yeah. They've been told a story. Like, I'd people say, you can't be positive all the time. I said, who fucking told you that story? <laughs> you see what I mean? It's just a story. Yeah, a negative person. <laughs> it's just a story yeah. they've created. They believe. <laughs> the whole world is full of stories. Yeah. Which is why I try and teach now. And I talk, put it on social media. What story are you telling yourself every day? Yeah, I love it. What's the story? Absolutely. It's down to your story. And I said up on Facebook and I said today, like, make your story magical. Love it. Love it. Okay. And one final one, which is the, the, probably a big one to finish on, but we'll go for it anyway from uh, Mr. Matthew Chapman, who's going to be with us later on. And he <laughs> says, uh, well, he asks, uh, what's the biggest thing that has contributed to your success? Um, my own development. Yeah. Without doubt, um, I would be probably still working. I probably would have. I probably would have lost my dream. I'd have lost my full-time facility, bar none. The biggest thing, and I'm passionate about. If you could see me now, my hands are shaking. <laughs> like I am absolutely passionate about this. You have gotta get the education you need. Yeah. I nearly lost. I lost my house. I nearly lost my dream. And 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 you gotta get out of your own way. And there was a point that that point when I keep going by trying to tell this story all the time. When people tell me they don't have mo- enough money to educate themselves, they're lying. I didn't have any money, but I found a way. Yeah. And many people, you look, this is not just me. This is look at the successful people in the world. 
Everyone goes through that. Everyone has that same hardship. I can't afford it. They know they need to get the education. They know they need the guidance, the mentors, but they can't afford it. That's the delusion again, the story they're telling themselves. But they don't ask themselves a better question. And the question I asked myself at that point in time, where with that, if I didn't make, if I didn't ask this question, Chris, I can guarantee you now I would be working for someone now. And guess what? Mm. I know for a fact I'd have been, an, I'd have probably been an alcoholic or something, mm. because I've got an addictive personality. I know I would have probably been very depressed. I know I wouldn't have felt like, I wouldn't feel like I do now. I know I probably would have ended up in an in and out relationship. And I say that from the heart. Mm. I really believe that. And, and that point in time where I made the decision, where it was like. I've got to, well, it was like, what can I do? That was a great question to ask myself. And I never realized how good that was. What can I do? How can I make this work? How can I afford it? What can I need? And I sold some stuff in my house and I, and I found a way of influencing my mother-in-law to borrow us a little bit of money. Mm. You know, we sold bits and got rid of things and found a way. And that was it. So, so finding a way, a solution, like, like education is, is absolutely number one, education. Number two, having mentors, mm. having someone that's been the biggest shift for me having people around me to guide me, paying them for mentorship, paying them to coach me, paying them, paying for courses and seminars. I mean, I've spent well in excess of £200,000 on, on, on my own development. Mm. And you can say, well, that's a lot of money. You can buy a house with that. Yeah, but now I can go and create millions of them if I want mm. because of the knowledge that I've got and the inspiration for myself. Like, I can't, I can't stress enough the importance of self-development. That was the one thing for me that helped me win my world title. You know, I had, a, I had a personal development coach for five years, right, that she was a, the business coaching great, the mentoring great. She was the one that helped change me as a person. I'm the captain of my ship. And, I, and she allowed me to find me. She allowed me. We peeled like we're all like onions and we peeled the layer yeah. of onions to get to the core of who I am. And I really feel I'm getting to the core of who I am through a lot of hard work and a lot of development and looking at myself rather than looking at everybody else. Looking. She taught me. Well, I want to leave this. I want to give this to you guys. Is like, don't look outward, look inward. Like that was amazing. Like, like don't blame other people because you're blaming them. You're pointing away. There's three pointing back at you. How can I be better? What can I? You know, my relationships. It's not like they're shit. It's like, how can I be better? What do I need to learn? What? And that's where your true power lies, guys. Your true power. If you're pointing the finger and you're blaming and you're making excuses. You're throwing your power away. Your power is, is internally. When you look at yourself, you can change it. And that's what I did at that point. And then I just went on a, a personal development journey. And that's why my coaching and my development and what I do, it's not business coach. It is. But my, majority of myself, the amount of calls I've had this week already, which is they're my, per, they're my coaching clients or masterminders. It's all about personal development. It's all about how I'm getting them through the journey because that's where I've been. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, yeah. And, and, that, and, and that work harder on yourself than you do on your job. You know, and, and that's <laughs> what I do constantly. Make myself better. Make myself, like, more valuable to others. And, you know, so if I put it in a nutshell, education and finding people to help you who have been there that can guide you. And that is how you become successful in anything. Fantastic. Um, we've obviously, obviously we've already touched a, a little bit on your on your new center, but uh, what other things uh, what other things can we look forward to from yourself? What, what goals do you have or plans do you have for 2019 that you can share with us at the minute? Wow. Okay. So my goals change daily, yeah. and I have a lot of um, lot of like because I'm uh, the first thing I was how can I how can I reach more people and change their lives? Yeah. So we've got um, in 2019 um, we're doing a lot of free events. So we it. want we, we want to give and help um, uh, the martial arts community. So there'll be some free events for people to come along to to visit the new facility and to educate them and help them and guide them in building and growing their school and some personal development. Um, my big goal is is to set up something for the homeless. Uh, my other things that I want to do is I want to speak around the world. I, I, I spoke on stage in Wembley and. It, there was a trigger like I had so many people come up to me and like like and I don't say I say this humbly as well yeah. like when I'm on stage and I'm there talking a lot of the times I think I'm talking shit <laughs> so in my world I'm just delivering what is in my mind yeah. when I came off the stage I got a stand innovation and when I come off stage 
I, I got a lot of people coming saying, "Wow, that was amazing!" And and I don't say that I'm not being, I'm not being, yeah. I really, I'm just saying what it is. And I had people cuddling me and saying, "Wow, where'd you get that energy from? Wow, that was amazing, bro!" Like like, and I was like, I was blown away by the amount of people that came up to me, and I, I was really blown away. And, I, and there was a trigger point for, and someone said to me, "Mate, seriously, you can hit any industry with that." Like that, that, like it, it's trying, it can go and travel all over the world. And then I had a guy called Matt Fidesz, who uh, people may may or may not know. Mm. He inboxed me, and um, he's a great guy. And um, he inboxed me, and he said, "Man, he goes, you need to go into the personal development space because you're, it's, you, it, it's, it's more global what you can do with your energy and what you deliver." And I thought that was really nice of him, and it made me realise that actually, this giving side of me, I, I've probably been thinking a bit too small. And I want to give, and, and when I and I spoke on stage about giving, and one of my, my talk in, on stage was about giving. I said, no, I mean, give, give more, give some more, and just give, 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 give. So next year I'm going to give, I'm going to 10x my giving. Mm. I'm going to give more than I've ever given because I really believe, like, the more you give, the more you help, the more you, the more you contribute, the more you get back in. Whether it's it, 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 it just for me, I get back more that motivation to go and give more. Does that make sense? Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of you know you keep going. So I'm going to give more is my big mission, and I want to talk around the world. I want to you know I'm going to hit. I want to I want to speak in America. I want to go around the world, and I want to be on a stage in America and share my message uh, around the world about happiness, about uh, uh, motivation, and about fi- like just finding your true you and, and, and unleashing your superpower. And I'm going to be creating a personal development event next year. Wow. Okay. Unleashing your superhero. And, and I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be just amazing. And I want to, um, and you know, I just want to keep growing. I want to keep, I want to, I want to keep serving and helping uh, and developing. And I want to take, um, martial arts business mastery global, um, which will be really amazing. So yeah, I've got a, a lot planned to next year wow wow oh yeah oh and i will be i've got a new book coming out on marketing oh wow um, another one that on as well. so there's a few things I mean, just i i'm i'm sure you must have another 10 hours of the day somewhere that everybody else doesn't have access to like this <laughs> special <laughs> amount of time that you... <laughs> well I, I tell you what it is chris as well and people have been i have eight hours sleep yeah I have eight hours sleep and I leverage through people and my mind is constantly ticking. I have a beautiful wife. I have an amazing family that back what I do. And that's key. You know, I have people who back what I do and she's on side and she's amazing. But I have the same amount of time as everybody else. Yeah. And, and you know what, though? When you see that, I look at other people. I look at the Richard Branson and I look at Rob Moore. I look at these guys and think, oh, I'm just playing a small game, too small for me, and I need to step it up. Love it. Well, Gordon, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on the show because I, I just, I, it's great because I sit back and just soak it all in. <laughs> it's like I'm having a coaching course. It's brilliant. I love <laughs> it. Love it. Love it. I um, want to thank you, Chris for having me on the, the podcast, by the way. Anyone's listening to the podcast, Chris is doing an amazing job. Oh, He's you. an amazing guy. Keep supporting it. Keep sharing the podcast around. You know, he does this. Uh, the, he gets nothing for this. He's doing it because he loves it. And that's why I love the guy. He's great. And keep, keep, you know, if we can keep listening, keep sharing, keep evolving, you know, and, um, you know, helping people like Chris move this, create a movement. And that's what it's all about, guys. Absolutely. And whilst we're talking, thank you for that as well Gordon and whilst we're talking about podcasts you have a podcast yourself as well how can people find that yeah it's called the martial arts business podcast and um, you can find it on uh, Stitcher you can find it on Android it's on all platforms just search the martial arts business podcast we're listened in 34 countries around the world now uh, we're we've got a lot of a lot of reach in America and Australia uh, obviously the UK is the biggest market at the moment and it's about it's about building your business it's free advice on that um, we've got interviews um, that are starting to, uh, we're, we're building with some great key people as well, Brilliant. outside of the martial arts industry yeah. as well, may I add, on purpose, as you can imagine. Yeah. We're bringing them on, on the podcast so you get, you get a chance to, to speak to them. Um, I'm, I will be, um, I've got uh, Matt Fides, I'm doing a, an oh, interview wow, cool. with him because it'll be very different yeah definitely you know and, and and it'll be an amazing podcast that will be so i'm looking forward to sharing that with him and some of the guys in the states as well i'm like michael perella's coming on the podcast so i'm looking forward to to, to tying him down he's, he's agreed to come on it as well lee charles will do a bit as well because he was part of the martial arts background years ago and yeah. he's very he's very uh, uh, yin and yang isn't he mm. so um so he's really good he's a nice guy um and 
it's not just about martial arts business. It's about personal development. You'll hear things about getting out your own way and how you can develop yourself. So yeah, come and come and have a look on there. Um, I've also got uh, if you're a martial arts listener uh, or you're a business owner, um, there's my book as well. So get the book. It's on audio yeah, and uh, and on um, uh, uh, paperback as well. That's available around the world, uh, and that's uh, called the Mar- the business of martial arts. And it's a great book as well, a great audio book. I actually have both. Um, so the book for when I do, occasion, occasionally I'll, I, I do like to pick up a book and have a flick through. But for me, I'm a listener when I'm in the car. You know, I, I don't like to not use time and sitting in the car driving. I just feel like I'm, it's feel, I'm, I'm heading to a destination that's important, but I just yeah. feel like that time in the car, I don't like having that time. So <laughs> yeah. I always listen to podcasts and audio things, just constant audio books especially. So uh, yeah, it is a good one, guys. Do, do, do go and check it out. Listen, I'm, really, I'm really proud of that. Yeah, you should, should be as well. It, was, it's, it, it, is, it's, it, it, it certainly helped me out uh, a, a, an, an amazing amount. And it's one of those that, you know, uh, you keep going back to yeah. over and over yeah. and over. Um, and uh, yep. Uh, yeah. guys even when you're having a walk around the supermarket have the podcast on in, have the audio book on in your ears so you can be learning <laughs> yeah, whilst you're picking up your cornflakes you know <laughs> very nice <laughs> there you go that's a quote for you um, listen thank you for your time that hour has flown by absolutely yeah. flown by um, and thank you because I know you're a very very busy man and I appreciate you taking time out for this today um, My and I hope you have a great rest of your day whatever it is you have planned of which will I'll no doubt be lots <laughs> Yeah, I'm going out to a new centre and, uh, yeah, just uh, managing that. And I've got some more coaching calls and then into teaching and just living life. Remember, guys, it's a phenomenal time to be alive. Fantastic. On that note, we will leave it there. Thank you very much for your time, Gordon. Pleasure. Take care. Enjoy our podcast. Please remember to subscribe, rate and review Kickback with Chris on iTunes today. Wow. <laughs> so where to start with that one, guys? You know, um, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, first and foremost, you can, you know, just from just from listening to the first few minutes, you can tell how super passionate Gordon is about martial arts and the industry, wider industry as a whole, and about helping people. And and that's that's the re- that's the big thing that that really attracted me to his work um, was the the honesty, the honesty in which he delivers um, the content and the courses and. Uh, and the the way that he does, he goes out of his way to to help as many people as possible. You know, in the past, I've worked with consultants, and you know, I, I've actually we've actually well, I've talked about this on the show in the past about my pre- previous experience with consultants, and uh, for the majority, they 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 you know they they their main reason in it is to be involved with with that side of things is to uh, better their financial position um not that there's anything wrong with that at all um but with Gordon the thing that you know that struck me right from the get go is you know that he is passionate about helping people and you know he does as he mentioned with the the martial arts business Facebook group, you know, he set that up for free, and he was, you know, and and it's still there. It's still there, running for free with over a thousand people involved in it, um, sharing and networking, and he he regularly posts live videos in it. And when I say regularly, we're talking most days. You know, he's giving out content to the industry to help it grow. Um, so kudos to Gordon for doing that, and and long may it continue. Um, so coming up next, we have our uh, weekly or every other weekly uh, match out with Matthew Chapman um, talking about all things martial arts business um, so what we'll do is go straight over to that call now and I will speak to you on the other side you're listening to kick back with Chris the martial arts podcast brought to you by www.onlinekicking.co.uk okay guys so it's that time again Mr. Matthew Chapman is on the phone for a weekly well nearly weekly match out how are you doing today sir I'm good, thank you. Unfortunately, it's raining here, so I'm not happy. I didn't have to ask. It's actually um, 25 degrees here. I'm sat in my t-shirt. <laughs> <I'm> rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you're in Spain, which you're not. No, I'm not. It's Baltic, mate. It's freezing. It's four degrees. Yeah, and I'm sure it's got I'm grim, isn't it? Yeah. It's, but it's nearly Christmas, so there's a positive flip on it. Though. True. If you, if, you like, well, if you like Christmas, that is. I do. I love Christmas. Brilliant. Well, there we go. It's all a win-win, isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. So what we're going to talk about today, then? Uh, I think... I think we need to talk about consistency uh, okay. in terms of how you run your school, uh, your marketing, um, and how you look after your members. Because I think we all have sort of like moments where we we're really on it and we're really focused. You know, usually around the times when you're busiest, so sort of September until March, yeah. we're we're really bang on it. We're advertising a lot. We're taking care of our members. But for some reason, once we kind of reach a certain level, we we kind of let that intensity drop 
Yep. And we kind of slack off a little bit and we're making enough money and we kind of settle. And that leads to lots of problems. It does. I think it's fair to say that as an industry, and this isn't, I'm not finger pointing. If you're listening, guys, don't send me any hate mail. Although you can if you like, because that's some mail at least. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah, the first mail we ever had was hate mail, so I'll take it. No, uh, joke <laughs> aside, um, you know, uh, if there's one thing the industry is, is it's we are consistent at being inconsistent. You know, yes, it's, it's, I'm. I am. I'll be honest. You know, with the, the with my school and with the podcasting, with the online courses, I tend to put all my eggs in one basket, so to speak. You know, yes, I'll, I'll go. Okay, today I'm going to do this, and I'll push, 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 push. I'll get some results, take my yeah. foot off the gas, and then I'll look yeah. at the next thing. I'll put all my eggs in that one basket. I'll push, 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 get some results, take my foot off the gas, and I sort of. It's almost like a spinning plates thing, I suppose. You know, and I don't spin them all consistently. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah. I think I'm a perfect example, should we say? <laughs> well, I think uh, most martial arts instructors I've kind of talked to are like that. And it's very weird because martial arts is founded on discipline and consistency. <laughs> so we are consistent with our training, consistent with our stretching. You know, we, we do what we need to do to uh, get excellent at martial arts. And then when it comes to our business, we just totally ignore that and don't do it. Yeah, it's, it's a strange one. So, you know, what advice would you have to people for people then to sort of help with that you know well it, it's a weird thing i mean i don't know why people do it it's kind of like this boom and bust thing they get um what it is is the pain of losing students suddenly gets too much and you realize your classes are a bit quiet and you know your monthly uh, direct debit's gone down a lot and if, then you panic so you've got sufficient pain to uh, motivate you so then you panic and you start doing lots and lots of uh, marketing and taking care of the students and it builds back up and then we just get comfortable, complacent, <clears throat> and let it drop again. And it's just this kind of boom, bust, boom, bust, up, down way of doing it. I don't know why people do it, either because you know, we're just lazy, or maybe we like stress and drama. Or like most martial artists, I think we're primarily motivated by pain yeah. and, not, and not goals. So if we, you know, if we don't have big goals to aim for, and we're not aiming for a specific goal with our school, we kind of just chug along and wait until it gets really, really painful before we take any action. Yeah, that's true. I've been there. I think, I think, I think everybody has at some point. Even the the super successful people um, at mm. some point will have done this. You know, you know, uh, like, as you just said, it's September. The place is rammed. You kind of, oh my god, where's everybody going to go? There's not enough space for everybody. Ah, I'll stop advertising, and then November comes around, and you're thinking, where the hell is everybody? Yeah. Uh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Panic, panic, panic. You know, get advertising again. Oh, well, it's January. The place is full. Oh, crap. What am I going to do? Stop advertising. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then March comes around. Shit. Where's everybody gone? Where's the all, where have they all gone? You know, and it, it, it's. I've been there and I've done it. And um, it, it actually. Yes. T- I think, it, like a lot of people, it, it, you, you, you just don't realize what you're doing. And then you. I mean, I think a lot. Of, I think with a lot of people, and I can, I can, I kind of understand why they're thinking it. They're thinking that you know, if oh, I'm really busy, so I should stop sort of putting myself out there, you know, because I won't be able to cope with the people that arrive. But you know, what we did, we just formed a waiting list, you know, and um, and I thought, my initially my worry was, oh, but if I have a waiting list, people are going to get annoyed and stuff. But what I've actually found is, it's not that they enjoy being on the waiting list. But it actually, they talk about the fact that they're on the waiting list. Yeah, it creates demand. Yeah, anything that people have to wait for creates more demand, more desire for them to to go for it. So it's actually not a bad thing. So yeah, we just keep off. Not not I want to say foot on the gas constantly. We, we, there are various levels, you know, where we sort of up and down, and we'll rotate the way we advertise. It's stuff we've talked about before. Um, yeah, and um, we're just always keeping some. We're always keeping going. We always, we always want to be present in people's minds. Uh, yes. Not having to suddenly ram it in their face. Look at my school. <laughs> you know, I'm desperate. Yeah, you want to be you want to be front of mind. So that needs consistency in marketing, doesn't it? Which uh, Gordon's always going on about as well as we know, like being uh, consistent and getting stuff out there into the local community as much as possible. Just keeps you front and center. So when they're ready to buy, they do. Absolutely. And um, we've got a question this week. If you Ooh. would you like to take it. Uh, let's finish off this uh, consistency thing first, shall we? Oh, sorry. I mean, I've got things to talk about. I'm being inconsistent. Sorry. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think you need to be consistent on your marketing throughout the late year, like you were saying. So I like I'm getting told off now. <laughs> yeah, no, naughty Chris, bad boy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, be consistent in your marketing so that you keep marketing throughout the year for when those quiet times, uh, you know, happen. You have a waiting list already created for those classes, which is perfect. Mm. I think you need to be consistent with your uh, statistics. So you're keeping an eye on all your stats. You don't let that slack. You know, how many students have you signed up? How many students have quit? Yeah. And all of it, uh, your numbers of intros and number of signups. So you can just um, anticipate any problems because if you're inconsistent with your stats, and for example, one instructor is having a hard time, they're not teaching great classes, and you're losing students because of that, you won't be able to tell why you're losing students. And you might think it's another reason. It just might be down to that one instructor needs a bit more training or they're a bit stressed out or they're not enjoying their job at that particular time. And the only way to ac accurately kind of diagnose what's going on in your business is to keep consistent with your stats. Yeah. And then finally, I think you need to be consistent with your service to your members especially current members because like a lot of businesses when we get a new member we're like super enthusiastic and supportive of them and then you know if they've been with us a few years that you kind of slack off a little bit with them and they're just part of the furniture of your, of your school and your business and you don't take as good a care of them so i think consistency with uh, supporting your members is key as well so those three areas marketing statistics and members taking care of your members makes a big difference yeah no, absolutely brilliant advice there as always um am i allowed to ask the question now yeah go on then <laughs> sorry about that. i thought you'd finished because you'd already, you'd already given us some fantastic content i genuinely thought you'd finished but no i always, no, no, no. always give in i'm loving it i'm loving it and um, actually came in from mr a guy called mr uh, david hector who i've had the pleasure of um working with at a number of my workshops over the years he's come to my workshops and then actually earlier on this year he actually had his first sort of super seminar event he actually invited me to teach his workshop which was which was cool and um, cool. the, the question yes it's quite an in-depth one this you ready Yes, go ahead. I'm going to read it as he's, as he's written it down. It says, uh, right. for Matt Chapman, roughly the same question, because he actually asked Gordon the question as well. Uh, yeah. Was the decision to take his system online and sell courses and drills, was it just financially driven or was there an emotional element as it freed up time or reduced stress or focus so that things that you want or needed as an individual could be done to enrich your personal life? <sighs> Check that out. That's, that's a good question. Uh, it's a, It was an emotional uh, reason, to be fair. Um, I just kind of got burnt out. I was doing too much in my business. I was doing too many private lessons. I was teaching too many classes. I was dealing with too many problems. I was dealing with repeated problems from the same people over and over and over. Uh, and I just kind of felt like I, one day I woke up and I felt like I was living like Groundhog Day. Yeah. It, it, I wasn't being challenged um, mentally, you know, or, or anything like that. It, I was just going through the same motions. And I've been doing that for 19 years. And literally, I just woke up one day and thought, fuck it, I'm out. <laughs> so <laughs> luckily for me, I had a way out. And the way out was uh, a few years earlier, I started doing the Mitmaster thing. And I set up Mitmaster more for my students in the beginning um, to help them with their training. And then I found that other instructors wanted to buy it. So I started uh, selling it a little bit online. And I was doing OK. It was, it was you know, bringing in a bit of money per month. But at that point, once I'd had enough and I, I was ready to make the jump, I kind of fully invested my time and energy into building it and making it a, a sustainable business, which it is now. So it's my, my only source of income now, uh, pretty much, is doing the online thing and teaching seminars. And um, it's really good. I'm a lot happier because I'm not having to deal with, because I'm not particularly empathetic or sensitive, uh, I have a problem dealing with like moany people, people who whinge, parents who moan, uh, staff who complain about stuff and then don't actually do anything about themselves. I just don't have the, uh, I think I've just ran out of empathy for all these different problems. So I had to get out because it would have negatively impacted the business. And, you know, it, it, I wasn't happy. That's the main thing. Yeah. If I'm not happy, I need to make a change. And now I get to do what I really love, which is hang out with martial arts instructors, uh, come up with cool drills, train stuff, uh, explore new avenues, go and share my ideas, concepts with other martial arts instructors. So what I kind of found out was, is that um, martial arts instructors are my true love, not really students. 
if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, obviously, teaching for a long time, teaching thousands of people, I thought that I, I love the students. But what I really love is working with martial arts instructors because we're fun, you know, and we're, we're highly motivated, uh, inconsistent, obviously. <laughs> but I just... I just love hanging around with martial arts instructors. We like share stories. It's just great fun. So that's why I wanted to do it. And luckily I've been able to do that. And I've started to help other people doing, which is the main thing because I'm very worried about a lot of martial arts instructors only having one revenue stream, yeah. one way of making money, which is to teach uh, physically because, you know, you're going to get older, you're going to pick up injuries you're going to have issues come along. You're going to have stress in your family where maybe you can't go and teach and you, you don't have any other source of income, which is really worrying to me. So yeah, no, yeah. you're right. You're right. I mean, I'm, I'm not quite, not quite sort of the, the first generation of um, like the full time boom instructor. But you know, I'm like late 1990s. You know, when it really, when it really started um, yeah. getting big, and uh, I, I, I dropped out of college. I got. I dropped out of college to to become a full time <laughs> instructor. So I, you know, I yeah. Well, at, at, at nineteen, it seemed like a sensible decision. Uh, I'm not, right. not that I'm not that I'm saying I would want to do anything different necessarily. But um, you know, I I got my A levels. I was studying photography and like uh, journalism, sort of that that rough around that sort of thing at college. And yeah. um, as I've told this this story a thousand times, broke my instructor's nose accidentally. Um, covered for him long story short ended up getting a job and it, it, it does I, when you know when you're 19 when you're 20 when I was in my early 30s didn't give it any thought didn't even cross no. my mind nearly 40 now and I'm starting you know I'm starting to think one what am I going to do if tomorrow I permanently damage myself and two mm. in five years time if I suddenly don't want to do this anymore what am I going to do am I going to yeah. carry on doing something I hate or um, and, I may, and I may never reach that point, but no, I doubt it. That what if? That what if? You know, what if I suddenly don't want to do this anymore? You know, yeah. What 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 am I going to do? You know, I, I've got some A levels in a subject I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I can just walk down the job centre and go. Well, well <laughs> I've got twenty years experience as a martial arts instructor, full time. Give me a job. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, I get, get that. And what I was worried was um, myself, like, how do you, what most martial arts instructors do is they then start trying to build a business with multiple staff and maybe franchises or multiple locations. But my issue with, with that is it, it was turning me kind of into a bit of a manager of yeah. more more people, more problems, more stuff. And I wasn't enjoying that either because I'm not <clears throat> not really a very good manager of other people. I'm a, I'm a pretty good manager of myself. And what I really, really enjoy is just being creative and coming up with like, is training and coming up with cool stuff. So I had to make a choice. Do I, you know, take myself out of the business, you know, work on the business instead of in the business and start hiring staff and getting, you know, uh, possibly a larger location and then managing the staff? Um, or do I follow my passion which is training martial arts meeting martial arts instructors traveling and teaching seminars yeah and luckily the online allowed me to do that but i want people to understand it's not because i'm particularly technologically amazing or i'm not particularly fantastic martial artist it's just the technology now is so simple that it's very very easy for someone to set up an online stream of income teaching martial arts and then you just increase your chances of finding people uh, who are interested in what you're doing a hundred million times because you can access the whole world. If you live in a small t a town, you know, and you've only got 5,000 people in your town, that's your maximum market. You're going to be able to get in to your school. And we know you're not going to get 5,000 people in. You're probably going to get a hundred in maximum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a stress as well. Now you, you, you can't get any bigger. You, you're, you're in that town. So what are you going to do next? You're going to have to set something up in the next town, which is maybe five, 10 miles away and do the same thing. But then you've got to manage that and you've got to manage the staff who are doing that. And then you've got to deal with all the problems. So I was like, I don't want to do that. I'm not that way inclined. So the online seemed like the best choice, and thankfully it's working great so far. It is. Uh, yeah. Whoa, bad echo. Yeah. Okay. 
I could hear myself back then. That was one of those weird ones, but that's no, all good. Um, yeah, no, as always, thank you for your time and advice on, on those issues. And I, and, and David, you just got a really in-depth answer there, dude, so I'd be really appreciating that. Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm kind of quite fired up and passionate about that teaching online thing because I think so many martial arts instructors have got so much great content that they could put online and, you know, earn an extra 500 quid a month or, or, or considerably more. Just doing that, it's just that they're, you know, they're a bit scared of the technology or they're not sure how to market it. And I just want to help people out with that. Yeah, it is. It is it's a fear thing. You know, I um, we were at a networking event last week and we were talking about prices. And, you know, there was a and I'm not. Well, I am I'm going off on a tangent, I suppose, but I can. It's my show. Um, the, <laughs> <laughs> there was a um, wow. That's a diva moment there, wasn't it? Jeez, it's happened. It's taken six months. Um, but no, I, there was a. a, a Somebody there was saying how oh, they were charging three pound fifty for for classes, and I was like, oh, mm. oh wow, I was paying that in nineteen eighty eight. Yeah, um, and and I and, I, and I, we were talking about you know barriers we put on ourselves, and I remember for ages using the in, in my head, I was sort of justifying it as saying, you know, I'm I'm charging this amount because I want to be as accessible to the to my area as possible. I want everybody to be able to train. But in effect, what I ended up doing was I just was attracting sort of scroungers and people that really didn't give a shit about their kids. <laughs> yeah, and they're um, just using for cheap babysitting. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it was a fear. It was a fear of charging more and rejection that was getting in my way. And as soon exactly. as I removed that, I put my prices up over a tenner a month on the basic level. We've got more people in. And of those people that are now in, they're actually spend more when they're with us and they bring their classes, kids, sorry, they bring their kids to more classes. Because, exactly. You know what I mean? It was just, and, and it's, and I would imagine it's a similar thing with the online. You know, people are like, oh, but what will people say? And yeah. Will pe-? And somebody asked me that at the same event. He went, but what if somebody buys your stuff and they then they say you're really shit? So I was like, well, I don't care. They've paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get it. But if you see, if you put, off, put out enough content like I do everywhere Facebook, you know, Instagram, Reddit, um, YouTube, they'll, they'll watch your stuff before they buy so they know what they're getting Mm -hmm. it's not a problem because they they kind of see how i teach what i like to teach and they go oh yeah that's cool i kind of like that stuff they'll buy it Mm -hmm. if you just don't put enough stuff out there so people can't find it and then they buy yeah they may not like what you what you create so part of it is creating enough content and being consistent again getting that content out into the world fantastic all right well thank you as always for your time um it's a pleasure as always and um i hope you have a great weekend and we'll we'll catch up again for the next episode which will be our christmas episode yeah hopefully it's sunny <laughs> it'll be snowing fingers crossed it'll be yeah, snowing probably. it'll be snowing yeah. probably uh, have a great weekend sir and i'll catch up with you next time cheers mate bye enjoy our podcast please remember to subscribe rate and review kick back with chris on itunes today Thanks as always to Matt for his time. Always lots to learn, lots to think about, uh, lots of fun as always too. Uh, so that brings us to the end of this week's podcast. Um, now next week uh, or the next episode, so should I say, is is pretty is a pretty cool one for us. It, not only will it be our Christmas episode, but it will be exactly six months since the podcast first starts. And nearly 25 episodes. Well, that'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? If it was actually episode 25 at Christmas on our six month. I won't say anniversary. That sounds a bit weird, but you know what I mean. Um, and, I, and I've said it about six million times, but you know, thank you to everybody for their uh, support. It really is appreciated. Um, still, still, lots going on towards the end of the year for me in my school. We've got our gradings coming up, which is always, always a difficult time. We've got all our pre-testing first. We've got to check students' attendance. We've got to check what they know syllabus-wise, that sort of thing. Uh, always good fun. Always nice to see uh, students progressing. And uh, yeah, but it's a tricky time. I'm sure the school owners out there will be able to uh, empathise with, especially with it being Christmas. There's so much extra things going on. On the subject of events, uh, this Sunday there is a very, very special event going off for a dear friend of the podcast and of mine, uh, Mr. Anthony Pillage. Uh, The event itself is named the Pillage's Last Huzzah. In true Tony Village ways, um, it's taking place. It's always oh, on December seventh, uh, December the second. Can't get my words out today, uh, which is this coming Sunday. That's what I was trying to say. Sunday and the second at the same time, but second of December, uh, this coming Sunday, one p.m. till five p.m. at the Empire Coventry, which is one hundred and fifty Far Gorsforth Street, and the postcode is CV one five DU. 
Um, the details, there's actually a Facebook group which I will link to. Uh, as many people as we could get on this, it would be absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, to all get, get meet together, get to train with, with Tony one last time at a big, big, big seminar event, um, show him that love and support. You know, there are still tickets available. Um, I'm going to be there. I'm actually going to be there doing a little bit of video in. Um, Prior to doing the podcasting and stuff, I used to I used to have a little well, I wouldn't call it a media company as such, but I used to run a, a little video company, um, making promotional videos for martial arts schools, that sort of thing, uh, before the Facebook boom really took off. And um, I've still got all that kit, and I still do from time to time, like do little, little bits of video here and there. So um, Tony asked if I go along and do some video, and you know, how could I say no to that? What what? What a brilliant opportunity to, to be there around so many um, like-minded martial artists and obviously to support Tony as well. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're going down, drop me a line. Uh, we can meet up while we're there because have a chat with, with listeners um, and obviously uh, make sure you put on your best makeup uh, for the video uh, because we won't be allowing any ugly people to feature in the video. But yeah, see there if you're going down, guys. Um, if not, have a great weekend. Um, I've got some details of some upcoming guests that are going to be coming on soon. Um, really, really excited with the lineup we've got featuring people from all over the world. Uh, so, so, you know, 2019, really exciting times. Also, also, one last thing. We are at the minute in the process. This is brand new, hot off the press news. Um, we are in the process of, well, obviously, the podcast is moving on. You know, We're upscaling things lot of work involved. I would really love to get this back to weekly again um, as soon as possible. But at the minute, you know, Matt, Matt's involved with, with his Matt Chats, which is brilliant. Uh, but from my side, uh, everything from the producing and the, the, the press and the publicizing and the research, it's all, I'm doing everything. I'm wearing all the hats. Don't get me wrong, that's not a complaint because that's how it is when you first start out with things. But what I'm really would be really keen to do is to get get others involved. So if you are keen on you know putting in your hand, uh, giving producing a try, uh, become you know giving a research work a try, uh, we're not. This isn't. Let me be hundred percent clear with this one. No paid positions. This is just voluntary because you love martial arts. You like my podcast and you want to be involved, you want to get the experience. So maybe you're at university or college, or maybe you're just keen to give it a go. I'm looking for people to get involved with the show to help me with the production side of things. So everything from um, publicizing on Facebook uh, to you know researching for potential guests, getting in contact with those guests and scheduling so we can work out a time to record, um, You know, helping out with stuff on the Facebook groups, you know, looking for potential sponsors, that sort of thing. You know, And obviously, as the podcast grows, and I say as it grows because that's what's going to happen, as the podcast grows, then we will be obviously looking to uh, remember who helped us out and help those people in return. And obviously, if, you know, if, you are, if you're somebody that, that has products uh, to, to sell or promote, as long as they're filling with the ethos, of the of the show itself and, and and you know it's nothing too dodgy or weird you know i can give you some free some free publicity on there as well so it's a win-win for all involved so yeah if you're interested in getting involved please do drop me a line you can either get me through the the website which is kickbackpodcast.com or through the facebook group or drop me an email at chris jones tkd at gmail.com or the good old-fashioned phone calls all the details are on the website um Get in touch and we'll see what we can work out. But yep, failing that, guys, I'll either see you at the weekend at Tony's event or I'll catch you on the other side of the other week. Christmas time is nearly on us. Don't panic, people. It'll be all right. Thanks, guys, and I'll speak to you next time.